I want to tell you that our next satellite, GSAT-20, which is a four-point ton satellite, which is going to be launched by Falcon 9, is just ready. Yesterday we had a clearance from ISRO to be shipped uh, to USA for launch, uh, possibly by August. I think that's uh, going to be one of the very important big communication satellite in the high-throughput regime, which is a 50 GPPS satellite. We are now going to have a continuous human space flight activity, leading to landing on moon by 2040. I want to tell you that our next satellite, GSAT-20, which is a four-point ton satellite, which is going to be launched by Falcon 9, is just ready. Yesterday we had a clearance from ISRO to be shipped uh, to USA for launch, uh, possibly by August. I think that's uh, going to be one of the very important big communication satellites in the high-throughput regime, which is a 50 GPPS satellite. Now, if you look at other Trends that are happening world over is in is a trust for exploration and human space flight. I think this is again another important trust that is being given by many nations, including the, the renewed interest in going to moon, building space uh, stations, looking at other planetary systems on a continuous basis, and then create missions, especially the one which will inspire generations. If you look at all this as uh, the general trends in space that's happening. We should also look at the announcement by Honorable Prime Minister in the recent times for the vision, space vision for Amritkal. He clearly looked all these elements into that and then created a new space vision for us, which we are all working on, which includes uh, continuing the human space activity beyond Gaganyan, which we announced just one mission, but then we are now going to have a continuous human space flight activity, leading to landing on moon by 2040. This is a big vision as far as this nation is concerned. It requires developing capability of you, higher payload capability for our rockets, though the LVM-3 continue to be the, the bigger rocket that we have, but just not enough. It has just enough capability to go up to moon, but it cannot even come back, uh, the payload that we launch on this rocket. We need to double up this capability even to bring samples. Then think about sending humans to moon and then bring them back. We need to have higher payload capability. And when you develop those capabilities, we also need to have, uh, cannot lose sight about the commercial angle to such an activity. And it cannot be just for sending humans to moon, it must also serve the ecosystem in a long-term sustainable manner. Unless you do that, it will not you know, attract attention, it will not serve the whole ecosystem in terms of business or sustain the production and launches. Yet another element of this is to continue exploration of moon and other celestial planets on a budget that, of course, you know, ISRO is well known for uh, working on very low budget uh, capable scientific missions. And this is also another important topic, how to sustain and do these type of activities. So if you are to do all of this, it requires an ecosystem that needs to be developed. Just if you look at in India, to do all of this, we really are not capable of. I think this is a fact. If you look at the industrial capability to produce and launches in India, it's just not enough. I think we need more people to come in and start doing on this work.